Nestled on the banks of the Derbyl Urigan at the foot of Mandoon Estate is this exquisite little cottage. When I come for a drive out to the Swan Valley, it's a must do. And this is the lady that keeps me coming back time and time again. Bring your taste buds. This is a feast for the senses and it's an experience that happened almost by accident. But as we know, that's how some of the best ideas often occur. Dale Tilbrook is one of those people who just makes you feel good from the moment you meet her. Funny, kind, ridiculously knowledgeable, she and her brother Lyle began the gallery to celebrate their culture. Dale added bush tucker tours not long after to feed the growing appetite for traditional food. And today we're making use of the magnificent gardens around the house as a backdrop to learn about some of the bush tucker foods growing here in Australia. Well, the first thing I do is tell people to take a photograph of what the table looks like, because at the end of it, there should be nothing left. We're going to eat everything. I want them to leave with a sense of awe and wonder that there's so much out there in that big bush supermarket. Do you have a favourite aisle in the bush supermarket? I do, I do. And I would have to say it's wattle seed. In Australia, we've got about 100 edible mm. species of wattle seed but we're not going to eat that. Don't eat that? Don't eat that because I don't want to be responsible for your dental bills. The old girls always told us, yeah. roast your wattle seed. You don't know what you don't know. That's why you come <laughs> on the tour so you learn. And I'm not the only one settling in for the show. The white cockatoos aren't local. They just know a good thing when they see it. And the same is true of some of the food Dale introduces her guests to. We always start with the fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move on to things like the quondongs and the sandalwood nuts. Are these native to WA? They're native to WA. And the Europeans couldn't believe their luck when they came here and found we had a sandalwood tree that produced an essential oil similar to the East Indian sandalwood. Okay. So if you have arthritis, you'd be eating the sandalwood nuts. You can also crush them into a paste and colourless, odourless oil. At this point, my favourites are these. Finger limes would have been a snack food. This is this little party mm. trick. You just squeeze it, now come all these pearls of flavour. <laughs> and then you eat them. As I said, originally the idea was just to run this operation as a gallery, but Dale had some pretty special mentors. How did you learn all about them? It started off by listening to my elders going out on country with one particular elder who's not with us anymore, so I won't say his name and he was determined that I was going to start a business in culture. So we did, because yeah. at that time, there were very few Aboriginal owned and operated businesses in culture. So we started out making boomerangs and had a little gallery and then it just grew from there. That was the most enjoyable, informative and delicious couple of hours I've spent for a while. Do you like my cup? Thanks, Dale. Thanks, Dale, indeed. It was a lot of fun. I hope you get the chance to come out here and enjoy it for yourself. And Dale's made me a little cup of tea using strawberry gum tea. And it actually smells like strawberry, the one gum tree in the world that the flavour of strawberry is in. The things that you learn. 